Welcome to this episode of Riley in the Bars. I'm Eddie Conway, your host, coming to you from Baltimore. Uh, we have been following the voting rights situation for ex-felons in Florida for the last couple of years. Over 1.4 million people that has been through the Florida prison system and released or have lost their right to vote. A couple of years ago, they organized a campaign. The campaign was successful. They got the voting right initiative put on the ballot. They won by an overwhelming majority. And then the state of Florida state government decided to limit who could actually exercise that right to vote by putting fines and other restrictions on them. To talk about this issue in Florida is Phil Tuffam, founding director of Equal Justice Under the Law. Thank you for joining me, Phil. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you for having me on. Around this voting right issue, and it seems like uh, there was a win. Can you kind of like update us and tell us what that means? And absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, voting rights for people in Florida dates back all the way to the Civil War, uh, when Florida, as well as many other southern states, uh, were really trying to figure out uh, really diabolical ways to restrict the rights of former slaves to vote. And what you saw in most of the southern states going back to the 1800s were laws that prevented people from voting if they had prior felony convictions. Uh, that combined with racist police practices meant a whole lot of uh, former slaves and descendants of slaves as the generations passed were really not able to vote. Florida was one of only four states that permanently prevented people with prior felony convictions from voting. Well, that all changed by ballot initiative. Uh, people with prior felony convictions got together in Florida and passed the ballot initiative by a supermajority. 64% of Floridians said, hey, when you're done serving your prison sentence, when you're done with probation and parole, you should be able to vote again. It's not a lifetime bar. That measure passed overwhelmingly. And the Florida legislature, which is dominated by Republicans, wasn't happy. They didn't want to see a lot of people with prior felony convictions voting. And so the Florida legislature passed what you could really call, could call an amendment to the amendment. The legislature said, okay, finish, prison, finish your prison sentence, uh, finish probation and parole, but also you've got to pay back any court debt. Uh, these could be fines, court fees, restitution, any kind of court debt that might have been attached to your conviction. And for those who can't pay their court debt under the legislature's vision, you can't vote. Uh, it really amounted to a poll tax. Well, a lot of civil rights groups got together and sued in federal court to challenge this poll tax. Uh, the federal district court agreed and said, A, it's racist, B, it's discriminatory, C, it violates the Constitution. Uh, you can't charge a poll tax. You can't effectively prevent people from voting just because they're too poor to pay court debt. Uh, that case was appealed, and the appellate court also agreed. And so as it stands right now, the courts are unanimous that in Florida, your inability to pay court debt should be no barrier to voting. Okay, I understand that the state of Florida is probably gonna challenge that. Uh, what does that mean? Where do they go? Is this the highest court in Florida? Do they go to the uh, federal uh, uh, court next or, or what's up? So the case originally started in federal court. Uh, the the vote the voters the the people with prior felony convictions actually won in the trial court they've already won once on appeal uh, the appellate court agreed with the trial court and said the proceedings can continue what happened then was the trial court continued the proceedings actually held a trial on the issue earlier this year in April and issued a, an opinion agreeing with all the voters agreeing that folks who have finished serving their prison sentence but are just too poor to pay court debt can register to vote and can vote in this year's uh, elections upcoming this November, the state has promised to appeal again. So the state is going to appeal. They're gonna be going to the federal appellate court, which is called the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. That's a court that oversees multiple states, including Alabama, Georgia, Florida. It's not just limited to Florida. Uh, it's a federal court. And the law is very clear. A state cannot condition the right to vote on wealth. 
voting is not a privilege that's only supposed to be accessible to those with money. Voting is universal, rich, poor, and otherwise, everyone should be able to vote. And I think the 11th Circuit Federal Court will agree with the trial court, will agree with the prior appeal that what the Florida legislature is trying to do in restricting the ability of people who have finished serving prison time from voting is illegal. The final step the state has is to go to the U.S. Supreme Court, where I think they will also lose. And I think the state is not uh, stupid enough, frankly, to try that move. So the state is running out of options. Court after court has told them what you're trying to do is unconstitutional. And I hope the state officials realize you can't prevent people who have finished serving their time from voting solely based on poverty. What about those exceptions? Uh, are those exceptions that they tried to put in there going to be effective? Uh, people with uh, prior murder convictions or rape convictions, uh, are, are, are they separating those individuals out or did, did this case cover everyone? No, it's a, it's a great question, Eddie. Unfortunately, the case does not cover everyone. The law has two exceptions that you noted. One, those convicted of murder, uh, but the other is huge. It's not just rape. Actually, the second exception is any sex offense. It's an extremely broad uh, exception. I mean, sex offenses as defined by the Florida State Legislature include an entire range of things. Of course, you'd have first degree rape at the extreme end, but many, many other offenses that are a lot less serious that still qualify as sex offenses. Uh, what, what you'll see in Florida is literally thousands, tens of thousands of people who are convicted of what the state considers a sex offense who will never be able to vote in Florida. Uh, even if they've finished serving all of their prison time, even if they've finished serving all their probation and parole, they've repaid their debt to society. That exception was built into the original law, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, in my opinion. Now, uh, of course, voters approve the law. Uh, the exceptions are still there. So those with sex offenses, those who have been convicted of murder, still can't vote in Florida. It's, it's right now, because the state's going to file an appeal, uh, uh, all the, the ex-felons that would be eligible to vote, are they in limbo now? until this appeal is filed and heard and resolved or what? Well, what I would say for the future is it depends on mobilization. Right now, the current state of affairs is the federal trial court has said that people cannot be barred from voting solely because of their inability to pay court debt. So folks who have finished serving their prison time should go ahead and register. <laughs> uh, I think the appellate court will affirm that ruling, but what's important now is to go and register. The ruling is currently saying folks have the right to vote. So that should happen. Now, the appellate court could take some time. It's very likely they'll resolve it before November. Courts understand society. They know the election's coming up. They wanna get some finality here. There is a little bit of limbo, uh, but the current status quo is go register to vote. Uh, the issue is there are more than a million people in Florida who have prior felony convictions. And the law in Florida doesn't just cover convictions in Florida. If you have a felony conviction from another state, and it may be decades old, it may have been you know, 30, 40 years old, and you may have finished serving your time a long time ago, even if it's from another state, you were barred from voting in Florida. So there's quite a lot of folks who are now eligible to vote, should register to vote, and should vote in November. Uh, as you know, Eddie, it's a turnout question. There's many, many other ways that uh, powerful forces try to prevent folks from vo voting, especially in a state like Florida. I mean, Florida has a very, very, very long history of racism. Uh, it, it's done many things, not just disenfranchisement, to try to prevent not just people with convictions, but also uh, racial and ethnic minorities from getting to the, the ballot box. This is just one barrier, but the time being, this barrier is out of the way and the court's ruling is favorable. Well, if you had something to say um, to the public, to those million people that uh, are eligible to vote right now, and I heard you say they need to get out, would, would you have any other advice for them? I think there's two things. First is register to vote and vote in November. And the second is, Get rid of the legislators in Florida. I mean, they are really working in Florida to deny the right to vote. The legislature knows that the vast majority of the court debt that's out there 
is uncollectible. I mean, when you think about it, when someone finishes serving a prison sentence, they have no job, they have no apartment. If they have family or friends, maybe they can find a place to stay, but a lot of folks are in very unstable housing situations. Repaying court debt, which for the majority of folks is over $1,000, is almost impossible. The state knows that this court debt will never be repaid. The state's not trying to get the money. They're actually just trying to prevent people from voting. And that's the problem with the state legislature. They don't want to see people voting. When that happens, you see a legislature whose interests are contrary to the interests of the voters. Those legislatures need to be taken out of office. Uh, so my, my reaction to this is that people should vote and people should realize their legislature is trying to deny the right to vote. That's not what you want to see in a legislature. And it's time to find some elected officials who actually support the rights of people in Florida. Any updates uh, or, or whatever happens next? Can you please get in contact with us so we can cover it? I absolutely will, Eddie. And this is such an important piece because it's affecting over a million people in Florida. Anyone in doubt right now should know the current state of the law is go vote, go register, be ready to vote until told otherwise. But I'll absolutely keep you and your viewers updated. Yes. And I, and I will comment that Florida is a key state. What happens in Florida in most cases affects the way in which the national elections turn out. Uh, and uh, that's how we end up with George Bush or somebody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, yes, I would encourage anybody that uh, is eligible to get out there and to do it to go vote. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, go ahead, Phil. I was just going to add, I mean, Eddie, you and I are both old enough to remember in, in 2000 when the election turned between Al, uh, Al Gore and George Bush on Florida, and it was only by a few hundred votes. They had to do recounts. The Supreme Court got involved. I mean, we, those of us who are alive remember what was happening in Florida then. Florida's a key swing state. It's still a very close uh, swing state in every presidential election, not to mention Congress and the Senate. Uh, it's going to be a close race. And whichever side folks are voting on, it's really important for people to get out to vote, but particularly folks with prior felony convictions. Uh, you know, people with felony convictions have been denied the right to vote in Florida for way too long. And finally, finally, the state of Florida has decided enough is enough. We want to see our citizens actually voting. Let's take them up on that and, and get out to the voting box. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Thank you so much, Eddie. And thank you for joining this episode of Rattling the Bars.